All right, I'm gonna do things a little differently because I had a mishap at the shop. So I thought the sticker idea would be a good idea, but whoever invented these needs to be gut shot and hung in the desert. This is awful. Where I was trying to do a lecture and it didn't work out very well. It's out of focus, it was dark. So I wanted to have a better explanation of what we're doing and how we are doing it. But before I get started on that, part of the intro was a big shout out to my friend, Jesse Savage. He made the bottle opener and I uh, wanted to say thank you. Check him out, he's got an Instagram page, it's pretty fun. Great guy. Thank you to all the Patreon people, all the supporters for their help and love most of all. Ben wanted to go over heat treating as I see a lot of stuff online, on forums, on Facebook, and a lot of dangerous stuff and misconceptions as well about what we're doing and how we're doing it. So when we talk about tool steel, we want to identify what's the tool that we're making because there's gonna be a purpose for that tool. And that's typically of what are we trying to make. If we're slitting and drifting, center punch, a uh, hammer, they all have different different ways accomplishing that task. What's a, What are we making it out of? Because tool steels have different ways of treating them. Some are air, some are water, some are oil, some are water and oil. The main concept is we're going to be talking about is grain. Yes, I'm using an Eminem album to make circles. It's one of my favorite albums. Don't judge me. I just use it for more than one reason. <laughs> so when we get tool steel, it from the factory, depending on how you purchased it or where you purchased it, but we can assume the grain in the tool steel, and this is like looking at a cross section of it, there's gonna be varying sizes, big grain, small grain, little grain. Your job as a smith is we have to use some theory, some old guys and microscopes and testing stuff came up with a process and they found out we can affect the size of the grain by using heat. So if this is the common of new tool steel, unless it has already been annealed and ready to use. So with tool steel, there are different things that we can do. We can anneal it, we can normalize it, be the natural state at which the tool steel wants to be. And then we can harden it. Grain is as tight as possible and then we can temper it. And we're going on the side of using heat. And there is another theory of using cold uh, processes like, uh, what is it called? Terminator, liquid nitrogen. Some guys are using liquid nitrogen and I haven't done any of the cold treating, which is it's really intriguing and I am curious about it. But for now, we're all, we're gonna be using fire. We're gonna be using heat. Again, if the grain section, anneal, I'm gonna exaggerate these, but if the grain is as big as possible, normalizing, we get it up to temperature and let it air cool, and the grain is going to a state that it likes to be at. And we're doing this all multiple times. So annealing, I usually do three times, and normalizing, I do at least twice. When we come to hardening, all these molecules are compact. It's like everything loosey-goosey comes and then constricts together. And that's what makes it hard, is all these molecules are jam-packed in there. And I typically do it three times. Again, depending on the tool and depending on the process of what we're doing, but I try to get very thorough because we don't want, you know, everything is, is hardened on the perimeter, like a case hardened situation, but inside here is pretty large, annealed, pretty soft. You're not gonna get very predictable results. So be thorough, don't hesitate to do these things uh, multiple times. Temper, 
we'll draw as a cross section like we're looking at a tool so if the back end of this tip is hard and then we're coming in with the heat and the temper we're making those molecules relax a little bit get a little bit larger so they're a little tougher and they can move around a little bit temper and I, I do the temper at least twice and all this depends too on the application of what the purpose is and the tool steel be treating it like it's 43 oops 4340 tool steel it's good cold working it's okay hot working and you can get a, get away with the tempering on this guy ranges from roughly 400 to 850 you know we don't want to get into the low reds which i believe start around the nine 900s so we're just going to draw a little bit of the cold chisel so the, the first thing i did is as i annealed the cold chisel and then i forged it in the video you'll see i forged a pretty blunt cold working chisel so I forged it down here and however you want to dress this end I dressed it down just a little bit more but this is a common tool I use for taking BBs or sharp edges away this 4340 is also a if I forget it's also an oil quench you can buy oil quench you can use old motor oil peanut oil I use motor oil or oil quench oil is what we have available at the shop so after I, I forged everything, so I kneeled it and I forged it and I forged in the oranges and yellows. So the same for the reds to the upper yellows. And we're talking 1650 to 22. I typically stay in the low orange and yellows when I'm forging tool steels. I want to respect this as much as possible. When it starts getting cold, put it back in the forge. First thing I would do is I would anneal this material. And the anneal temperature, the literature says 1450 to 1550. And that is a red, a red color. After annealing's done, I would then go ahead and, and forge the end that I want. And then I would heat it up again and I would normalize it. And I'm on the side of caution when it comes to tool steels. So whenever I forge it, I don't want to impact everything, get everything back to like this state. So I'll forge it, get the forging done, and then normalize it. If I have time, I'll go ahead and anneal it and get, get the grain back to a large state. Because when I start heat treating it, I want to start off at the large state and come back down to a tightness and then bring it up so it's tough. You can't get this so tight that it's very brittle we don't want that we don't want stuff to work hard in and then start breaking off and making cracks and shooting out over here and going inside your your friend and he's not very happy because he has a piece of metal inside of him that looks bad ignore that so the normalizing temperature the literature says is 1600 and that's a red going into an orange. So after I would forge it, this one, I normalized it. And again, doing normalizing about twice. Hardening temperature, we're going 1500 to 1550. Pretty small window there. This is the upper reds. And pay attention to this, you know, the normalizing we get a little bit hotter, 1600 hardening is a little bit less heat and then the tempering happens at the very end so the anneal depending on the tool axes and whatnot i've done at least i've done as much as three times tool steels maybe twice and then the normalized twice hardening i try to do the hardening no more than three times if it's something like this is like an inch wide if something this big i probably would harden it multiple times compared to this i probably would just harden it once so keep in mind the stock and and visualize what you're doing the material and how it reacts to the steel and especially when you're using it if it starts to bend and mush and do stuff you don't want to you know stop and, and fix the tool and then tempering again i do at least twice 
because I want a thorough treatment. I don't want a variation of the outside being how I treated it, but the center is different. We don't want that. We want nice, thorough treatments when we're doing all this time putting into the tool steel. We're doing a progressive heat treat. Progressive meaning the state of the grain being soft, hard, and then tempered. So the softest point should be the striking end, which ra radius your edges. You know, the hardness of this guy will happen mostly from here to here. You don't need to hard, harden this whole thing. There's no point of having all this, the tool steel to do what it can and be tough. And then we want to treat the working end so it can hold up to the abuse. And we also need to treat this working end so it can hold up to the abuse as well. This one we want to be able to be soft and it gets progressively hard to there so that this stuff can can move and mush around if it needs to we don't want to we don't want a crack to develop and then something shoots out like our poor friend here so after we get it hard sounds so appropriate no matter what i say it's going to sound bad i get the tip hard we get it hard anyways but after we heat treat this so it's hard about this much here we're going to temper and we're going to heat in this area and allow the heat to soak up and then we'll we'll get the temper colors or yellows or blues or violets what i'm aiming for is that we have a yellow and we have a blue and then we have the the violets and then the steels i have a real broad range of a heat treating going on this will all be normalized this tip here will all be hardened and then the tempering, all this tempering happens up here. So this is all tempered. So we have a progressive soft to hard. And the hardest, the hardest point will actually be behind everything. We don't want this to be, we want this to be more tough that way. If it does bend, it can instead of getting a crack and then that breaking free flying through the air becoming shrapnel in the tutorial i'll also go over the concerns of heating the non-magnetic not all tool steels follow that theory and why it's kind of dangerous and just the safe assumption is to heat to non-magnetic and oil quench that is not the the safe way that is not the way i would like you to practice but hopefully this is a good general introduction and we are making a cold chisel uh i always forget is it le or el chisel it's like puzzle chisel puzzle uh oh well le ah it looks like el el yeah. well they'd be chisel so we'll leave it chisel cold chisel so this would be for cold working hot working tools h13 is great for hot working that stuff is awesome and what we're doing is that we're using a material called sucker rod in colorado we have pumping and mining and out in the fields you might see um, a machine with a long arm and then they have these poles going down and this guy rotates up and down and what this is doing is it's causing the pole to move up and down and creating an artificial lift because they're trying to pump out either oil or water or something down below. So this is creating a, a sucking motion. And the material that we're using is called, casually called, sucker rod. Comes in a variety of stuff and you can identify what it is by the knuckle of it. Typically we, we treat it as a 4340. That's a, a common alloy that the sucker rod is made out of. And we have about a mile of it and it reacts really well if I treat it like a 4340. It does, it does spark similar to 4340. So I'm going to assume the sucker rod that I'm dealing with is a 4340 and I will heat treat it as a cold chisel as a 4340 and go through the states mostly of normalizing, hardening and tempering because of time and this being a tutorial, I did not go over the anneal, but all the anneal is is the temperature of uh, the 1450 into 1550. 
The temperature I would probably just aim for a solid 1500 and stick it in vermiculite. We'll go over that in the tutorial and let it cool slowly. Uh, the deeper you go in heat treating, the more you will find. It gets very specific very quickly. But hopefully this is a good introduction to help you guys understand grain in the tool steel, the contents that make the tool steel, and there's other variables other than just carbon. There's also alloys in tool steel that give it its property. And different tool steels are made for different things. I wouldn't necessarily grab a piece of Atlantic 33 and expect it to perform like H13. All right, so we're gonna get started right away and we're gonna start forging our material and go through the process. <laughs> 